Hello everyone and welcome to another Windows 7 session here on Channel 9. With me today, David. David, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is David Blythe. I work as an architect in the desktop and graphics technology group in Windows. And my name is Johari Kiriati. I'm a technical evangelist from the client platform evangelizing group. Uh, and David, today we're going to talk about all the cool stuff, what's new in Windows 7 graphics aspect, right? So what's new in Windows 7 graphics? Okay. So it seems like the easiest way to, to uh, introduce or talk about this would be to draw some pictures about where we fit into the, to, to the big picture. Cool. So we'll draw the biggest picture first, which is um, think about it as layers of abstractions for, for the system. So up at the top, we have applications like um, third-party applications or the shell and just draw these as, as layers, and that has like the taskbar and uh, and the uh, start menu. And then below that, we have the UI platform layer. And you've already heard some talks about Scenic and, and yes. some other new technology that's mm -hmm. going there. And then on top of these things, or sorry, underneath these things are built on top of of sort of our piece of the puzzle, which is all the different graphics technologies. And so you think about this as the the primitive graphics layer. And this is the area I'll, I'll expand in a second. Yeah, and that includes, so sort of at the coarsest level, we have the, the window system. Which includes the input system, which is mouse and touch and keyboard and all those things. And then the output system. And that includes GDI. Uh, DirectX, uh, GDI Plus, and uh, um, some other pieces. Right. And I'll probably mostly talk about things that we've done in the Windows system and things that we've done in the output system and not so much about the input system today. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. And by primitive, you're saying just, it's just on the bottom side, right? It's well, and, and from a level of abstraction point of view, this is like draw lines, draw triangles, draw strings of text, uh, create a window. Fill a window with a with, with a rectangle. You know, at the UI platform layer, what we're talking about is controls like create a list box or a combo box. Um, you know, some animation, and then at the application layer, you have IE or the shell or you know third-party applicant office or anybody else, and they're either using pieces of the UI platform or perhaps they're calling directly down to the to these lower layers to be able to draw triangles and text and fill boxes and those sorts of things. You know, or if it's a game application, they're using Direct 3D to to draw, you know, grow shaded texture map, you know, uh, uh, geometry at uh, 60 frames per second to do their their high performance games. So we had talk about uh, about the shell, and we had some talk about the UI platform. Now it's time we talk about the lower piece of the puzzle. Um, so David, what's new in uh, Windows 7 with respect to the Windows system? So, sort of we look historically at the evolution of Windows. That the the way I think about this is that there's kind of this continuum in the the, the architecture that we're always adding improvements to the system and we're trying to keep all of the old stuff working and add some new stuff and make the pieces fit together. So you know if we look at you know the Windows system traditionally people think about as some combination of user 32 or win32k.sys. And in the Vista time frame, we added something called the DWM, the desktop window manager, which you know, uh, frequently I'll just call the compositor. So, so for those who are haven't, you know, keeping track with our changes, what is the DWM? So, what, what happened with DWM is what we're trying to do is change the way that drawing worked in the system. So, normally what happened is uh, just add, add a couple more components to this picture. Is that when an application is running up here, so this could be a GDI application or a D3D application, it creates a window, and th th that shows up on the screen here. Let's pretend this is a monitor. Um, the way the system worked in XP and, and before was that whenever an application drew, it would draw directly onto the screen. So as it drew each line or each primitive, uh, it would display on the screen and do those updates directly. What happens in the composition system is instead of drawing directly to the screen and having things visible right away, there's a redirection surface that it draws to, which is a piece of memory, a bitmap um, that's off to the side. And the advantage of doing this is that so we can defer and get the entire contents up here and then post them uh, you know, using the compositor to create the, the full desktop picture. And what it does is for every application running on the system, it looks at the, 
these redirection surfaces or these backing store bitmaps and builds up a, a view of the of what the desktop looks like. Now the fact that we have this separate copy allows us the flexibility to do a bunch of different things. So for example, in the taskbar, the live thumbnails that you see, they take advantage of the fact that we have those redirection surfaces around and it will use the contents of those to create the live thumbnails. Um, so we added that basic support in Windows Vista and of course there's more that we wanted to do. So in Windows 7 we continued to add new features to that. So the you know one of the big things that we tried to do is improve the efficiency of it. And this is where things get, you know, a little can get a little bit arcane in, in terms of the detail. But what we really wanted to do was save memory. And what we're what was happening was the way if we draw a little bit of the output system in here, let's draw GDI. And say the application is drawing through GDI, it would draw in the original you know, uh, uh, XP system, there was a complex driver model for just for GDI to be able to to use hardware acceleration to draw directly to the screen. In Windows Vista, we changed things sort of as a temporary thing so that GDI drew to system memory rather than to the graphics hardware accelerator to the GPU's memory. And the consequence of, of that is the way the composition works is the uh, the compositor, DWM itself, is a D3D application and it tries to use hardware acceleration. It uses texture mapping functionality to go and draw the, to create the this desktop view. What we would end up ha having happen was that when the uh, redirection surfaces were created there in system memory, and in order to do the composition work, we'd have to transfer them to the graphics hardware memory, and we would end up with two copies of Obviously. memory, and, 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 and occasionally we'd end up with three copies. And what we wanted to do is change DDI so it could draw directly to the graphics hardware uh, uh, accelerator's memory, and to do that we essentially had to re reinstate a, a, a minimal hardware acceleration layer for GDI so that we weren't going directly to through software to system memory anymore. And that was a big change. So that, you know, we've done measurements and we've seen you know, the amount of memory that we've freed up in the system or memory consumption has gone down fairly dramatically. Um, there are, you know, so that's not like the most end user visible feature, but that's the thing that makes it easier for us to work on lower memory footprint systems uh, that, you know, on, on lesser hardware. There are also much more end, end user visible features where we've just gone back and tried to complete some, thing, some functionality that we didn't have an opportunity to, to finish in Vista. For example, we'd always talked about with the composition system, since we have these redirection surfaces, we could do things like, magnif you know, in addition to producing thumbnails, which are smaller versions of the map, so we could do magnification and we could add some accessibility features. So we added a, a full global desktop magnifier. Which we'll uh, see later. Which, yeah, we'll, we'll do a demo of that later. Um, and then there are improvements that we've made also for, you know, as part of the user experience, the, the way I sort of decompose things is I think about the window system and then there's a window manager. And the window manager is the, the, the part of the system the, the user interacts with. So the taskbar and the thumbnails and the new uh, arrow features, the window arrangement feature, the arrow peak and arrow shake, they all leverage the capabilities that are in the compositor and, and that support that we added to, to allow the shell team to, to build those features. To be more creative and you know get wacky. So, so yeah. all this work that we've done in seven basically reduce the memory footprint, but also make the thing works faster. That's correct.